Welcome to the Inner Princess Course Guide to Taurus Trap Hard Part 1. In this video we'll cover the front nine, holes one to nine looking at the routes, risks and choices this course offers. This is of course built around the same layout as the Taurus Trap Day course, but the designers have modified the holes to up the difficulty level and it makes for a really interesting round. Being a hard course, it is therefore set at night time and the fire lanterns scattered around the route make for some great themed lighting. I'm always happy to play this one in a multiplayer group as almost every hole has the potential to split the pack with either moments of brilliance or regrettable mistakes. Without any further ado, let's start at the very beginning with hole one. This sees the classic layout from the easy course stretched out over a two-tiered approach, with the hole now off-center and without a direct line. There is a small downward slope halfway to the hole, which will either provide acceleration or a jump depending on your speed. Taking the simple approach and playing at a weight to the slope will still deliver your ball to within putting range, providing you keep to the left. This makes hard work of the second part in order to have an easier first hit, so it should only be used as a safe backup route. A higher reward, low risk route is to aim just to the left of centre and give a positive medium firm hit to send your ball towards the back wall, as the bounce here should take you close to the hole, leaving a short putt for par. To get the birdie, follow the same route and if you get a lucky bounce, you may well end up acing the first hole on the course. This isn't hit too often, but if you follow the right line, it's very achievable. At the base of a waterfall, you'll find the par 3 hole 2. This compact green sees the cup tucked away behind a pair of large rocks and there are three main ways to navigate your way to the hole. Route 1 involves playing around the outer rock to the right and a couple of kind bounces can bring you to within putting range for birdie. Unfortunately, the weight needed to get around this way can risk sending you out of bounds if the bounces aren't so kind. For Route 2, aim straight between the rocks where you'll find just over a cup's width to work with. Hitting this line at a gentle weight should see your ball safely navigated around to the green, again to within a safe birdie range. Route 3 is played by aiming for the sloped edge of the right side rock, jumping your ball up and between the two stones. This is a wider target to aim for and is pretty forgiving with your weight, so I'd recommend this as the best route. If you still need convincing, be aware that a fortunate bounce here can send your ball straight over for the eagle hole in one, which is all the more reason to go this way. Hole 3 continues on from hole 2 with the theme of bits and pieces to get in your way. This par 3 is the classic up the hill, through a barrel, off the plank, into the stones, round the corner and in jobby. Simple, right? Well, actually, it is that simple. There's not too much room nor need to get creative with the line on this one, so focus on your weight. Aim straight, give it a decent hit, and you should end up on the better side of the cluster of planks with a putt for birdie. Sink this, and that's another one off your score. Should you happen to underhit, you may not be left with a straight line past the planks. Laying up for par should be simple enough if that happens, and you even still have a chance at the birdie with an accurate enough bounce off the perimeter pebbles. Next up, we have the four tunnel layout of hole four. Just as on the day course, you're faced with four routes down to the green, but this time the green itself is sectioned off differently. To save you the time of tracing each path start and end, I'll make it easy for you. Take the tunnel furthest to the right. This will carry your ball down to the far left quadrant of the green, and you're unlikely to have a clear shot at the hole. Looking at your surroundings, you'll see three options. One is to safely lay up for a two putt par, Two is to hit away from the hole to gain a bounce off the flatter outer wall of the green, which has a small but possible chance of going in. Third is to try to get a bounce off the curved block surrounding the hole, which again has a small chance of going in. Hole five has a right angled layout with the cup situated at the bottom of a hill. The direct path down is tucked around the corner and this time there's no deflecting block to conveniently take you down in one. You'll want to lay up for your first shot and this has quite a wide margin for error. Once you've positioned yourself to within line of the ramp, you'll notice the cup is positioned in line with the right side edge of the down ramp. Playing along this ramp will not put your ball in, but should leave a safe putt for par. In order to get the angle needed, I prefer to play off the side wall and curve towards the hole. This has a chance of going in for birdie, but is a tricky putt to master repeatedly. An alternative first shot involves playing against the wall to your right in line with this block. Doing so with the right pace, good judgment and some luck will take you down the ramp and potentially in for an eagle one or a safer birdie two. Hole six is where the difficulty starts to ramp up. 
This flat par 4 features a wide map which doglegs around a water hazard. This time, the cup is positioned on an island in the middle of the water, with a connecting bridge on the opposite side to the tee. Similar to the easy course, you'll need to play around the jagged perimeter rocks to get a line at the hole, and you'll need a combination of precise weight and good fortune to end up with a straight putt for eagle. This putt will almost certainly be long and with a tiny margin for error. If you don't have a line or you'd prefer a safer birdie, sacrifice your second shot to lay up closer to the hole and take an easier third shot from there. This layout may remind you of a certain hole on Arizona Hard, only this time there's no conveniently placed rock to jump off. Instead, if you want to be an absolute baller, you need to play in and out of the water to get a clean shot at the eagle. Good luck with that one. Hole 7 takes you into the cave complex, and here you can really start to gain or lose a few shots on your round. If we ignore for a moment the suggestive shape of the green, <coughs> you'll see that the two-tiered mat has only a small opening to drop down from one to the other, and an inconveniently placed rock makes it harder still. One approach is to lay up to a distance which gives you a clear second shot at the hole, but you'll need a really fine judge of weight to pull this off. Make it, and you have a potential birdie putt for two. But if you're short or long on your opening putt, you'll not have an easy route down, and will most likely have to sacrifice your next stroke. An alternative to the first layup is to play off a rock at the back angle to take your ball towards the drop. You'll need to judge line and weight here to get your angle, but without hitting so hard that your ball bounces out of bounds as it comes down. Make it and you have an easier shot for birdie. The hole in one route I'll credit to Haydeck, one of the first people I played multiplayer with and someone who is a brilliant help to the community. This involves zigzagging off two rocks on the approach strip, which can give your ball a route straight down and into the cup for eagle. Hole 8's layout and approach is very similar to that of the easy course, only this time your margins are much tighter. At a par 3, you'll be hoping for a certain par or a well-executed birdie. The dogleg right has no outer wall to contain the ball, and you've only got a small window of route through to a birdie putt. The first shot is a pure test of weight, and tempts you to play chicken with the far edge. Get it right, and you should just be able to see clearly past the inside edge rocks and through to the hole. Leaving this shot still requires you to hit a medium long putt just to gain a single stroke, so it's a tough hole to beat. If you happen to leave your first shot short, which is much better than going long of course, you'll have to accept that the birdie isn't really available. Play a straightforward layup shot at cup length to leave a pretty certain putt for par. We conclude this video with the par 4 hole 9, and this can be a great opportunity to boost your scorecard if you know the right way to play it. Somebody has had a tidy up since the easy course and built a wall of junk to block your route round to the wide green. The convenient plank across to the cup has also been removed and refashioned into a ramp over the wall of junk. This is the only straightforward route across but is far from easy. Playing straight at the ramp opening can take your ball across but the weight and line involved increase the risk of coming back down or bouncing out. Make it and you have a shot for eagle but I don't find this route very reliable. Instead, turn to your right at the tee and count the rocks until you reach number 5, my favourite rock. Playing off this stone will give you a cleaner angle up to the ramp and the benefit of aiming for a line which is still in view. You'll still have a lengthy putt to play for two, but it's a great shot to hit and your scorecard will be rewarded for making it. There is a hole in one route, which is high risk but good fun to try. Turn back at the tee and aim for this flat here to send your ball up and over the barriers on a chaotic bouncing path which could well end in an albatross. Definitely one for the practice round only though. As ever, thanks a lot for watching. I hope this has given you at least a couple of points to take away to improve your scores. This is a brilliant course to play in a group of people if you can, particularly because of how it all comes to an end on hole 18. With that in mind, I'll be working on the back nine next, so be sure to subscribe to be notified of when that's ready. The link to the Discord is in the description for you to join a great community and is an excellent place to meet other players and arrange group rounds. Please drop me a comment if you've got any questions or if you found anything I've said particularly helpful. I look forward to seeing you out on the course. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in part two.